life is traumatic. You're not getting out of this place without a little bit of pain. Healing a piercing is going to take time and patience and a little bit of care. And if you can do those three things, you can successfully heal anything. I'm Darren Dean and I'm getting my cartilage pierced today. I've always been into piercings. I feel like piercings are a little bit less permanent than tattoos. Piercings are a better option for me because I can take them out, I can switch the jewelry, um, I can let them heal back um, if I don't like them. I was stoked when I first heard about cartilage piercings for sure. For nursing school, we can usually only have one in each year, but it kind of depends on the instructor that you have. I've seen nurses during my clinicals and they pretty much wear whatever they want. They have tattoos, they have piercings. I think once I get to the actual job, I'll be good. I've gotten two cartilage piercings before. Both of them has scarred over with keloid scars, which are little bumps uh, that are right near the piercing. So I was super hesitant when I was asked to do this, but I am excited to learn from a really good professional about the um, aftercare process, because I know that's honestly the most important part. So I trust him and I'm ready to learn and ready for my piercing to look amazing. I'm Brian Keith Thompson. I own Body Electric in Los Angeles and I am a piercer. The difference between a Ford Helix and a typical helix piercing, the outer cartilage area, is I'd say a little bit of the cool factor. It's a little bit more pain. The reason why cartilage piercings, you're always hearing your friends and family talk about them if they've been pierced multiple times. They're probably talking about how hard it is to heal a cartilage piercing. And that's because the cartilage is very dense. A keloid is, um, it's a raised scar. Some people that keloid, if they get pierced with a needle, it doesn't really uh, take in. Um, you know, something like a gun that's more traumatic, you know, uh, can cause a keloid. But nine times out of 10, I'd say it is hypotropic scarring. And that is where your body overproduces collagen and, and kind of creates like a bubble around the jewelry and the piercing. And usually that is caused by either allergic reaction, sensitivity to the jewelry, improper angle of the piercing, or just you just can't leave it alone. You keep hitting it, trauma. When I noticed scarring on my last two cartilage piercings, I Googled everything. I didn't really know what to do, so I just took I just took the jewelry out um, and just let it heal back over because I was really nervous that I was going to have a massive scar. A lot of times people misdiagnose a, an infection with a nickel allergy or just an allergy altogether, and they think it's an infection, and it's not. The only thing I carry at Body Electric is titanium, platinum, gold, that's it. I wouldn't say that I like pain like that, but I'm not really nervous about stuff like that. It's probably good because I'm a nurse and I have to be around like needles and blood all the time. People go into the piercing just summing up the courage to get the piercing, and that's a lot. You know, you're, you're nervous of the pain, you're nervous of you've never been in the studio before, they're gonna laugh at you, or you're, you're, um, you're, you have anxiety about the whole process waiting in the waiting room, filling out the paperwork, picking out the jewelry, if the piercer's gonna be nice to you or not. I think the only thing that I'm super nervous about, honestly, is getting the same scarring that I've had before and having to take it out because I do love piercings. So I wanna make sure that it heals correctly and that I can wear super cute jewelry. I'm excited to see a really amazing professional and um, see how it works out with me. I'm going to clean the area. First, I use an alcohol swab. Then I'm gonna use a uh, antimicrobial cleanser. I use two different cleansers. I clean the area, dry it off. You're gonna see me take a toothpick and with Genesian Violet, I'm going to mark where I'm going to pierce. Now it's time for the piercing. The way I pierce a Ford Helix is a little bit different than most probably. I use a couple different tools and it takes a little longer for me. It's just the way I feel comfortable piercing it. So I use a, a tool and I pierce directly into the Ford Helix.
you're gonna see a long, skinny rod type thing. It looks like a needle, but it's not. It's called a taper. I take that and I back the needle out with that. So now that is a placeholder holding the piercing open for me. So then I take the base of the jewelry and that's what's called a librette back. And it's a little post with a flat back. And that's what's gonna keep the jewelry in and that's what's gonna heal in your body. Then I use my little small hemostats, I hold on to the post and I put the diamond on. so good. After the piercing, my initial reaction was that it did not hurt as much as I thought it was gonna hurt. And I was kind of surprised uh, with the aftercare process. I didn't know that doing less is actually better for your piercing. Now this soap is, has tea tree oil in it. It's Dr. Gotcha. as well, and I only want you using it on these two. Okay. Those two. A little bit in your hand and just gently move the bubbles around. The okay. bubbles, the suds are doing the work. You don't need to aggressively get in there and clean it. Okay. okay. I just felt like uh, mixing metals with her would be cool. She looked good with the hoops, but those hoops were just, like I told her, she needs to dig a hole in her backyard and throw those into that hole. I used yellow and white gold. I think I did a double little uh, diamond, my little signature piece on uh, the right side. Before I got the piercing, I thought that um, my previous two cartilage piercings that I had had keloid scarring, but he actually told me that they were hypertrophic scars, which just means that your piercing is irritated and inflamed and n you know not liking all the movement that you're doing. Low piercings can take a lot more punishment. Cartilage doesn't like it, man. They do not like to be messed with at all. So don't sleep on it. Don't play with it. It's not a puppy, keep your hands off of it. Your hands are covered in bacteria. At any given time of any day in Los Angeles, you have about 50 strains of bacteria on your hands. Don't touch your piercing. That's how you get an infection. For somebody that wants flexibility uh, with their piercings and maybe, you know, doesn't want something that's super loud and obvious, I would for sure recommend to get the Forward Helix piercing. Thank you for watching Refinery29. To watch more videos, click here. And to subscribe, click here.